we shall overcome. Yes, we can. Person, woman, man, camera, TV. What the fuck is wrong with you? Well, welcome to uh, What the Franklin. This is a um, it's a podcast here that will go out every day at this time at nine o'clock, and it's kind of a news culture mayhem experience. Um, good to have you guys here. Appreciate it. Uh, I am Chip Franklin. We have uh, a lot to talk about today. Uh, one of the things, obviously, that is on everybody's mind over the weekend is again another LGBT attack. Uh, if you heard the latest news from uh, Cutter today, is that uh, many of the groups are taking the uh, the rainbow armbands and they're not going to wear them. Um, and we don't know. If, I don't know. I don't know if it's, it's a middle East thing or because we have it over here, but uh, some of what happened there were five killed now, 25 reported injured, some of them seriously. And some of the stuff is just beyond heartbreaking. Here's one of the victims talking about the actual shooting and uh, it's just heartbreaking. I turned to my left and I saw the flash from the muzzle. And when I saw that, I ran, and I ran to the dressing room uh, where the drag queens change and get ready for their performances. And there was, including me, there were two other people in there. Um, shaking, crying, fearing for our lives. I'm thinking, like, at any second, this man could just bust through the door and kill us if he really wanted to. Bodies on the ground, blood, shattered glass people dead it was sad it was scary a little bit later on we'll talk and hear from uh, Dave Chappelle's performance on SNL and um, you know Chappelle of course uh, on his on his uh, Netflix special The Closer talked about LGBT and trans and we'll get to that in a little bit coming up um but I think the, the thing that since this, this is a, uh, a Twitter experience for most of us, if anybody out there knows who I am, it's probably from Twitter. And so I thought I'd bring in some of the, the smartest people I know that are on Twitter each week. And that would be, uh, of course, the incredible Brooklyn dad, Defiant, who joins us here. Um, uh, BD, you know, obviously, you know, you and I communicate a lot. We talk a lot about this. And this is a... Um, um, and we see it. We see it on Twitter. We see the response to LGBTQ uh, before we get into Trump or everything like that. This guy that was that was arrested uh, had a lot of social media. Uh, he was also a conspiracy guy. He was a Trump supporter. The police knew who he was. He'd made threats against his own mother before. And so now we find ourselves in this this situation. And it's it's heartbreaking. Uh, heartbreaking is is the exact same word I would have used to describe it, because it's it, this is 2022, you know, um, why we are still fighting, why are we are still fighting these battles for people to be able to love who they want to love uh, is outrageous. And why we're still fighting these battles to get these assault weapons off the street. Nobody needs a goddamn uh, uh, AK, uh, what is it, AR-15 to to hunt a deer. They're not hunting animals. They're hunting people. Yeah. Um, if those that don't know Brooklyn Dad, if you possibly don't, uh, he is a broadcaster, influencer, Democratic strategist, and uh, and, and joined right now by uh, Jojo from Jurors. Uh, this is Joe. Hi, Joe. Hi. How are you? I'm well. Um, it, you know, one of the things, obviously, that's changed recently is the, um, the Elon Musk takeover. And I don't think any of us could have anticipated it would have gone this strangely in the first three weeks. Or could we? <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I certainly every day I'm surprised. It's part and parcel to what you guys were just talking about, though. And if my dog starts barking, I apologize. Like um, everybody's got something to say. Yeah, we're sliding backwards. We're not. We're, the Republicans are taking us backwards, and Elon Elon Musk is hastening that slide. Um, the words matter, and the rhetoric that's coming out of the right right now, the grooming and the anti-trans, anti-gay uh, rhetoric, vitriol that's coming out of their mouths. Um, that 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 shooter was the grandson of a far right 
uh, assemblyman in Colorado who subscribed to a lot of the same conspiracy theories. And Elon Musk taking over Twitter, one of the largest social media platforms in the world, and giving free reign, I tweeted about this yesterday, to the, the, the most intense voices of intolerance. He's, he's giving them a platform again, shining a light on them just like Trump did. So yeah. this is all part and parcel of the same devolving element of society that is very, very dangerous. And the people like us and everybody else out there who cares about this stuff has to get really loud about. But like what's going on on Twitter is just insane. Yeah. Truly. It's interesting, too. I mean, I, I know both you guys from Twitter. Uh, I haven't met this next guy, but I've been following their work a long time. Devin Nunez Cow is the handle that it made us all laugh for the longest time. Uh, Ryan mm. Byrne. That's how I say your last name, <laughs> Ryan Byrne? Byrne. Byrne. Yeah. Uh, Byrne is not only, Ryan is not only a director of CalPAC uh, and uh, a filmmaker, former professor of archaeology, Whoa. which is pretty impressive on a couple of levels, you could probably, I'm whenever I hear somebody's a professor and I think what it is, I'm thinking like, Oh my God, how many tells am I giving off? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, let's start this whole thing. Uh, talking a little bit about putting uh, Trump back on Twitter and just, just how bad this could get because it's, it's worse. Former President Donald Trump back on Twitter tonight, Twitter's new CEO, Elon Musk reinstated the account after polling users on the platform. Musk had, previously vowed not to make any major decisions about reinstatements until forming a content moderation council. Instead, he laid off nearly half of his workforce, and just yesterday, we saw another mass exodus of employees. You may recall Trump was banned from Twitter and other social media platforms after a group of his supporters led a deadly attack on the U.S. Capitol while Congress was inside certifying the 2020 election results. Trump tweeted several unfounded conspiracies about the election, on January 6th, leading up to that riot. So, hey, sorry, sorry. The, the commercials are cutting into uh, the feed on my end, so I apologize. It's just oh. dropping me out. No, so I'm sorry. If you, were, so if you thought yeah. it was brain dead for a second, I uh... Well, I don't think, as far as I know, that uh, YouTube hasn't been purchased by Musk, so we're safe here, at least for a while. We have a safe, for the safe place. Let me ask all you guys um, and uh, your take on uh, where this is headed. A lot of people are are putting up a, um, a premature obituary. Maybe a lot of people are posting where they're going to be. Um, I'll just say up front, I'm not leaving. I'm not going to pay bucks for the, the check Mark, but I'm going to, I'm going to stay here. Brooklyn. What about you? Oh, oh yeah. I'm, I'm here until all of the wheels fall off this, uh, this cesspool of depravity. I mean, um, <laughs> but, but a lot, a lot of people have, have been throwing up, as you said, they've been uh, saying, you know, I'm going to Mastodon or going to uh, Counter Social because uh, in the past month, and I observed this uh, like about a month ago, a, a severe spike in the bot and troll activity, like like by a ridiculous amount. I've been dealing with trolls, you know, for as long as I've been a Brooklyn dad defiant on Twitter. I, you know, it's no, it's nothing new to me, but the amount, the va the amount of troll activity is vastly uh, increased in the past month. And it's, it's alarming to, you know, celebrities to, you know, the, the regular, like uh, smaller accounts, people that, that, aren't normally targets for hatred and intolerance are suddenly being deluged by um, a lot of hatred. And it's, you know, it's concerning. And I can imagine uh, advertisers aren't going to take too kindly to this either. Well, I wonder, I mean, that's a great point. All of us have probably received our share of hate mail. I mean, Joe, your eyes has been uh, mercurial. I mean, you've been um, in the last year, uh, you just went at it hardcore and with some support, um, you, you know, you, you know, added hundreds of thousands of people following you, I would imagine that you've received your own amount of vitriolic uh, attacks as well, right? <laughs> I mean, well, setting aside the death threats I was getting, which have, no, knock on wood, stopped for now. Um, no, I, I was just describing it this morning to uh, Noel Castor because it feels like I have a fly swatter 
And I have to constantly just get into my replies and start swatting people out. I am blocking like I've never blocked before. But the the ugliness, it used to be, let's say, like a six, maybe a five. It's it's pinned at 11 now. I mean, it is just some of the most heinous, horrendous, I would say, uh, probably 100 to 150 times a day, someone either calls me fat or explains why my husband left me, uh, which, <laughs> point of fact, didn't happen. Um, they, they go after my being a mom, you name it. I mean, there is nothing off limits and it is nonstop. I would say it's almost 80, 20% negative replies now, bots and trolls. It's bad. Ryan, you guys were sued by Devin Nunes, right? Yeah, well, let me just clarify so it doesn't, we don't create other weird rumors. I'm not cow. I, I'm no. here. I'm, I'm, I'm her because she obviously can't ever appear on a podcast. Um, so I'm her like behind the scenes partner, proxy ambassador. So just, uh, just to clarify, um, you're, yeah, you're, you're uh, a cow rep today and that's good for us. Cow, cow, yeah. Cow rep. I, I, I direct the pack. So, um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're facing, um, hundreds of millions of dollars in lawsuits, um, from Devin Nunes, who's not been able to subpoena cow or his mom, uh, because he doesn't know their identity or pretends not to know their identity. It's not particularly clear. Um, there's value in that an anonymity for the purposes of fundraising. Wow. I didn't realize that. Expect. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, like as and long as just for everybody, let's tell everybody what, what was the lawsuit? What was, what was he claiming? Alleging. Um, uh, he was alleging that he was alleging defamation. And um, what he did was he initially he sued he sued everybody, but initially he sued Twitter. Um, Liz Mayer, who was a GOP political consultant and two anonymous accounts, uh, the cow account and the mom account. He could have easily chosen any number of random accounts to sue. Um, but he chose these two very small accounts that had, you know, a few hundred, maybe a thousand followers at the time. Um, pick them out of obscurity. And the original intent was to suppress um, any concept of refuge uh, for critique behind the veil of anonymity. Let's, you know, forget that all of the Federalist papers were written anonymously. All the anti-Federalist correspondence was written anonymously. We've got, you know, going back to the foundation of the Republic, we preserve and cherish, and the Supreme Court has 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 since upheld, this fundamental right to anonymous um, posting of grievances of our government. It just so happened that that backfired in this case, because as soon as Jimmy Fallon and Stephen Colbert picked up on this, you know, Cow became this international folk hero um, and suddenly had, you know, hundreds of thousands of followers. Devin happened to pick on the two smartest people on Twitter just by <laughs> by random dumb chance and is paying the penalty because, you know, He's engaged some of the savviest political analysts, I think, who 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 are out there in Twitterverse. Um, his cases keep being thrown out against Twitter, but the reality is, is that for all of the attention of the media on the farce of these of these lawsuits, it's important to recognize that they were never intended to be won because they were never intended to be tried. The whole purpose of these lawsuits was to scare people. Um, into not critiquing anybody at all, while at the same time going common on, practice in, in the yeah, law. Sure, yeah, sure, sure. Going on, going on. How many times has Trump threatened to sue people? Hundreds of times. Oh, sure, right? sure, yeah. sure. Um, but then going on Hannity and waging this war as if it were a defense of the First Amendment. You know, and that's the problem with Twitter in general is that we all know um, that there is a disconnect between people's awareness that the First Amendment does not protect you from consequences from anybody other than the government right yeah. um but 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 the notion that our understanding of the first amendment is so fundamentally flawed that it protects the exact opposite of what it was intended to secure is bizarre you know and to use the anonymity as a let's call it a, a vessel into which you can project any conspiracy theory you want so cow is a soros operation so um it's a it's a ukrainian oligarchic psyop it's a hundred different it's eric swalwell it's ted Liu. it's adam parkamenko and all those people have been subpoenaed in federal right. court precisely because i mean my lawyer is prepping me for subpoenas right now um because <laughs> that's that's where this goes so, so all right so i mean where do you see uh, if if twitter does become the, the next true social. If in other words, these bots are geared to push people like Joe and Brooklyn and yourself off, how long will you stay? Indefinitely, until yeah. he takes us off. Um, 
you so know, all of us your... pretty much agree that we're not going anywhere, right? Yeah, keep your okay. keep your friends close and your oligarchs closer. All right. Real quick, I want to remind everybody, this is uh, What the Franklin Podcast every uh, every day at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, brought to you by Moskowitz LLP, tax attorneys and San Francisco. They do my work. They're amazing. If you have a friend who hasn't filed for a few years, let them help you before you get to the IRS knocking on your door. It's triple eight tax deal, Moskowitz LLP.com. Good people. I know them very well. They've helped me tremendously and a lot of my friends. Good stuff. All right. Um, let me, I want to, can I just jump here? I want to talk to you guys about something that um, do you remember on when the Netflix closer came along, right? And and Dave Chappelle got in trouble, or at least pushed back on the trans comments. I've known Chappelle since he was 13 years old. We were back in D.C. where he started out. So, I mean, over the years, you know, I see him here or there. And I was extremely disappointed because I think he's a really good joke writer. However, this was a, a case of, I thought, um, was punching down as it goes. And, uh, and it's so bizarre. So I was walking up the streets of uh, San Francisco. I, I was doing my show remotely in San Francisco on KGO Radio from San Diego, but I would fly up there and I'm walking up Battery Street. And who do I see walking down the street but Dave Chappelle? It was bizarre. He was there for a concert at the Punchline. Anyway, and I, we got talking and I didn't bring it up. And I, it just it occurred to me that, you know, that context is everything. You know, it is. Well, let's let's so let's look a little bit about what he had to say. And and your guys' thoughts on his um, his SNL hosting and the comments he made about uh, well I guess about uh, Jewish people. Well, I've been to Hollywood. No one's y'all to get mad at me. I'm just telling you, I've been to Hollywood. This, this was just what I saw. It's a lot of Jews. <laughs> like a lot. Anything. You know what I mean? There's a lot of black people in Ferguson, Missouri. Doesn't mean we run a place. <laughs> I could see if you had some kind of issue, you know what I mean? You might go out to Hollywood and your mind might start connecting some kind of lines and you could maybe adopt the delusion that the Jews run show business. It's not a crazy thing to think, but it's a crazy thing to say out loud in a kind of like this. <laughs> Look, and I love cutting edge comedy, you know, I mean, I know Louie and going back to people like Bill Hicks and this revisionist look at comedy is always painful. Um, but again, I don't think it's that hard. You punch up to me. Comedy works as a, a voice to authority. Um, this, this ridiculous idea that Hollywood is run by Jews. There might be a lot of people out there who are Jewish or here, I should say, um, but the idea that they get on the phone every Monday morning and say, how can we screw the Gentiles and blacks, please? So, I, you know, look, say what you want. You know, I mean, obviously, it's, it's not a First Amendment issue because he's not saying it about the government. Um, but I look at this and I look and I go I go out on Twitter and I, th I ask myself this question. Uh, am I an outlier? How, what, how do you guys what's your sense of this, Brooklyn? Chip, I, I, I think um, the more brilliant you are, I think the more important it is for you to be able to realize the moment that you're in. And I think like George Carlin would have disagreed with how Dave Chappelle is using his, um, his celebrity and, and his, his genius, you know, um, with a wink and a nod, you know, he's getting cheap laughs where he could go for much, much bigger laughs without having to tread on that on, on that old trope about, you know, Jews controlling the media and Hollywood and stuff like that. Come on, you know. Well, uh, and for the record, Brooklyn, the people that don't know, I've done stand up since 1980. Um, I've written for uh, everybody from uh, Steve Allen to Jay Leno to Johnny Carson to Conan O'Brien. I wrote a joke for Stephen Hawking once. I mean, so I've, I've done this my whole life. And so I, I, I and I just say that because I mean, I, I know how to do it. And, and I, and I think that Chappelle is, is a brilliant comedian without a doubt, which makes it harder. Um, Joe, what, what I, what, what oh, I wanted ahead. to say, what, I'm sorry. What, what I just wanted to say is that we all have a responsibility, 
you know, to use our, like with great power comes responsibility um, to, to ensure that, uh, that marginalized uh, groups or, or groups that are, um, are threatened must never, uh, must, must never be the target of normalized hatred. And that's what's happening right now to, uh, to the Jewish community. And a lot of people like to post on social media, like never again. And, you know, the first they came for the uh, communists poem, you know, and right. like, I'm really all about it. And then they'll turn around and say, Oh, but what, Dave Chappelle is saying is fine, but that's where it starts. There's when you start normalizing that hatred of a community, that's where the dehuman, uh, dehumanization starts and the danger enters the, the picture. You guys can jump in. Yeah. I mean, I mean, just to pick up on that, like it's so important what Brooklyn is saying, because like, I, I'm not a comedian. I wouldn't pretend to tell Dave Chappelle <laughs> in a million trillion years how to do his set. Um, but I'm just a mom who happens to have a couple hundred thousand followers on Twitter. And I know that people listen, some people listen to what I say and that I wouldn't choose, especially now when the uh, temperature is as high as it is to use my platform, even if it was tongue in cheek or wink and a nod um, to, to, to take advantage of something that is really dangerous and normalizing what is happening right now with hate speech is desensitizing people to it which we've seen throughout history before because that sets the sets the table for for real legitimate violence i mean things like we've seen now in colorado springs and that's just the most recent example so i, I i'm not going to tell Chappelle how to do comedy i wouldn't expect him to tell me how to mom but uh that wouldn't be how i would do it i think there's other uses for this platform and and right now uh, you know, with Kanye and a lot of other people and what is happening with particularly anti-Semitic rhetoric, um, it is 100% becoming normal. And that is very, very dangerous. And so I just think that there are better uses, there are better, better ways to, to get a laugh than that. Ryan, what do you think? Well, I mean, I, the, the, the people that he tends to target happen to be people in my family. And so I'm a little sensitive to that. Um, I, it's, it, it certainly doesn't elevate the discourse. And, and one of the, the casualties, I think, of, of normalizing this, as, as the two of the guests said, is that it's, it's one thing when the far right starts to um, mainstream hate speech, but when that also becomes an acceptable form of reciprocity on the left, where everybody starts to use it, where everybody starts to indulge in stereotypes, it's... Um, it, it, it seems to give everybody a pass. I mean, where is the exception to the discourse in which empathy is valorized? I'm, I'm a little hesitant to bring up Louis in this simply because um, he's been a great disappointment to me and others. Um, but he did have a, a bit about, um, and he said that the word Jew is, can be actually uh, an invective just by the, how you say it. You can say a Jew or you can say a Jew. And, and, it's, and part of this is, the world that we live in, especially if you're a person who uses your voice for a living, your voice, your thoughts, your words, um, you know, again, people make mistakes, you know, I mean, but again, if you're talking about trans people, if you're talking about marginalized groups, LGBT, we've like I mentioned this at the top of the show that uh, in, in uh, Qatar now, the, all these groups that we're going to wear uh, supportive LGBT bands are not wearing them now. They decided not to wear them. I want to say, I mean, countries are deciding this. Um, and of course, you know, we, we were listening again to Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Bopert and others who are going to be in committees now who are going to have the ability to um, not really get anything, anything really done, but to occupy the, the space where positive things could be happening. So in other words, acting as a, as a roadblock for real understanding and progress. You know, I mean, this is what it's about. In, in other words, if you, in, in my, my opinion, if you can move forward. And, and without somebody standing, I mean, Chappelle's extremely popular and all my com comedy friends, you know, when I say this, they're like, Hey, you know, comedy, and I just, that's all BS that you still have a responsibility. If you're in a club, if you're on television, again, I go back to this, you know, power people with real power. Um, and I say the, the power of the word and the ability to, to misdirect with a thought and create laughter, um, you know, in, in the past, this was like you go back and look at like um, Lenny Bruce, 
Lenny Bruce would go and say things about the mayor with the police in the room who were going to arrest him. These were brave people. That ain't brave. Going in front of people that love you and pushing uh, buttons, their, their fear buttons. You know, I mean, whether it's I mean, look, I'm not saying everybody has to be an, an LBGT advocate, but just don't hurt them. Yeah. Right. You don't. You, I'm not saying you have to love them or even understand them or blacks or Jews or anybody else. Right. But let them do their thing. Mm -hmm. If you don't understand it, that's OK. Right. Try to understand it. It can't hurt you. It's like I mean, I can't believe this country. I re remember in the last 40 years about this pushback on learning Spanish only in the United States would people push back against getting smarter. <laughs> Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, anyway, so, I, so the whole Chappelle thing, as that moves forward, you know, it, it's I just find it a little heartbreaking. And I, you know, did you guys watch the whole stand up? He um, there was, you know, there was a little bit of pushback. Um, and I understand that he thinks it's cutting edge. But I think cutting edge would have been, you know, some self-deprecation. Uh, if you want to talk about if you're an African-American, talk about the African-American community, you know, get some pushback from your core audience. I'm not saying that his core audience is all black. It's not. My sons are some of his biggest fans. Mm -hmm. That said, you know, I mean, to me, that's you. you <laughs> when Louis, again, I go back to Louis. I mean, Chris Rock, when Chris Rock's done that, Chris Rock has pushed, you know, I mean, that envelope really hard in his own community, in his own background. Mm -hmm. He also punches up more right. often. Yeah. Yeah. I've yeah. been a big fan of, of, uh, of stand up comedy my entire life going back to when steve martin was wearing the arrow on his head <laughs> you know comedy is not pretty thing um and the comedians do like to push the envelope and push the line you know and s some of them have said like their greatest moments are when they tell a joke and it lands so flat like <laughs> the entire room is silent right but <sighs> At the end of, of Dave's uh, number, his, his whole monologue, he said that uh, comedy is getting more difficult because he's not able to uh, say certain things uh, uh, without being canceled by them. You know, yeah. and that was First of all, nobody's was, getting canceled. These guys, Louis's not canceled. He's not canceled. Give me a break. That, that was a, a nod to the, uh, the, the, controversy about him and the trans community um but you know at the end of the day if you are that smart and you're that good you can figure out a way to be funny without it being at the expense of communities that are really really yeah. struggling just to stay alive right can now. i give you a couple of examples there's there's a feminist comic a friend of mine janine detulio i've known her for years and here's her here's a here's a feminist joke that is not necessarily self, but she was, she's, you know, the black widow eats the male after sex because she knows it's easier to get life insurance and child support. <laughs> That's a brilliant <laughs> joke, right? Or Bill Hicks joke about homeless people coming up to him on the street. He goes, God, I, man, it's such a pain in the ass. This guy comes up to me, he goes, can I spare a dollar? I go, dude, do you have any idea how hard my grandparents work for the money they left me? <laughs> right. That's a brilliant joke about a sociological deep seated issue that gets to the heart of it. That's, to me, what comedy is supposed to be. That's just my opinion, mm. right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, again, it's as opposed to attitude and all. So, but let's let's jump back to the uh, here before you guys roll. Thank you very much. I want to remind everybody what coming up is uh, Congressman, former Congressman Joe Walsh and Brian Karam. And we're going to get a little into um, uh, Trump's announcement and, and moving forward and some of the reaction. But um, you guys obviously... Uh, in the middle of Twitter with, you know, as we post and, and, and as we try to get our finger on, you know, how it will look differently with Musk, what is the tipping point here? Do you think if, if Trump comes back on and others and they start, I mean, already we've seen people adopt other people, identity, identities and all, and, and be able to pretend to be somebody else, something that we thought we were protected against. Um, do you sense in a year from now, Twitter will be pretty much where it is or will it have taken off to some bad place? Uh, let me go around real quickly. If I can, I'll start with you, Ryan. Where, where's it going to be in a year? 
it ain't getting any better. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm loath to make any specific predictions, but I think it's really going to depend on how uh, pragmatic a lot of users are about the need to stay informed about what the other side is doing and exactly how bad the threat is. I mean, there's, there is a great advantage to going to Mastodon and finding like-minded communities, but there's also the risk, of course, of echo chambers. Um, I mean, look at everybody who goes on a boat parade and thinks that the boat parade is the electorate. And my, my fear is that jumping platforms um, and leaving Twitter entirely kind of like leaves the field of battle open, you know, um, and I never cut off a source. You know, a good journalist doesn't cut off a, right. a, a good source, even if it's a bad person. And so I'm on Mastodon, but I'm staying on Twitter and, you know, I'm going to try to stay as informed as possible. Joe? Yeah, I mean, I definitely agree. I don't think it's getting any better. Uh, I think I think a lot of people are hoping that a lot of us will leave because a lot of us have a lot of people like minded to, with us have left. Um, and I think that is uh, I think that's a mistake. I think we do need to stay on the battlefield. We need to stay engaged. We need to stay in the fight because yielding that ground to those angry voices um, doesn't help anybody. And uh, I think we need to, just like when Trump was on before, um, a lot of us held him to task every day and, you know, fact checked him because you, you can't, you can't ignore him. There's a fine line with him where you can't, you don't want to amplify him exactly because you don't want to give him more power than he has. But if you ignore him, it's like ignoring an STD. I mean, it's just going to get worse. <laughs> hey, what's um, your handle real quick, Joe? You, oh, you jo didn't put Jojo from Jers. Jojo Sorry. from Jers. J-E-R-Z. Yeah. Okay. And I'm, and I'm also, I'm, I'm not leaving. I'm going to be up on the ship with the band as it's sinking. <laughs> um, but I do have a post account and that's brand new. And um, I have a Mastodon too, but I just don't understand Mastodon. <laughs> it's really confusing. But I'm you know. Jojo from Jers on, on post and of course on Twitter. Brooklyn, um, I was at a party and one of my sons was there and somebody found out that I knew you. And he was like, you know, Brooklyn, dad, you have a great presence uh, on there. And and it's I called you a Democratic strategist. I, I, you probably don't refer to yourself as that, but I think you are in a lot of ways and, and every way that's good. A uh, year from now, what, what are you going to be doing? Same stuff. I'd, I'd like to think so. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm just kind of hoping that. Uh, Elon decides to hand the reins over to someone else to an actual an actual CEO instead of, you know, the spoiled, uh, impetuous frat boy that he is uh, acting out as right now. Um, I think it would be a major strategic blunder for for the left, for us, for Democrats, liberals, whatever, to cede uh, this very important platform to the extreme voices on the right. I think we need to stay in the fight and to let Twitter become like a hollow echo chamber the way True Social or Parlor is right now would, would be an absolute travesty, you know? Yeah. Guys, thank you so much for being here, everybody. I really appreciate your time. Will you all come back, please? Of course. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Chip. All right. Be well. See you guys. Bye. Yeah, and that was nice enough. They're all nice enough to join us here on, uh, on What Franklin. I'm your host, Chip Franklin. Um, I can stop that music, I guess, in the background. That was trying to be cute as we played out of that. Um, so I'll remind you again, this is brought to you by Moskowitz LLP Tax Attorneys. Uh, if, you have an, if you've ever been audited, you know what a nightmare it is. But maybe you have a friends or family that haven't filed. I had a friend that hadn't filed in eight years. I sent him over to Moskowitz LLP. It was a, a musician, as you might imagine. And, uh, and got it all fixed. They contacted the IRS. They cut a deal. Um, of course, it's obviously different for everybody. But if you have any questions at all, 888-TAX-DEAL. It's MoskowitzLLP.com, 888-TAX-DEAL. All right. So this was expected, uh, but I don't think the Republicans wanted to see this. Always have known that this was not the end. It was only the beginning of our fight to rescue the American dream. And it's a word you don't use, two words. I don't want to be Joe. It's two words, American dream. <laughs> that was not good what he did. There are a lot of bad things, like going to Idaho and saying, welcome to the state of Florida. I really love it. <laughs> In order to make America great and glorious again, I am tonight announcing my candidacy for President of the United States. All right. Well, joining us right now is uh, former Congressman Joe Walsh. 
and White House correspondent and author of Free the Press, Brian Karam. Uh, guys, um, you know, I tell you. Hey, Joe. Hey, hey Chip. Hey, guys. Um, so there's there's a lot, obviously, here. Um, the latest poll I saw from New Hampshire and Iowa, uh, one poll had Trump down 14 points to DeSantis. The other was 12, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and and now it may not even get to the primaries. Uh, what do you think? <laughs> you don't think so? You think this is a solid deal? You think he's the nominee for 2024? No, I don't think he's going to be on the ballot in 2024. Okay. I think I think it's a con job. I think if the I think if the Republicans were really smart, DeSantis isn't the one that that would scare the hell out of the Democrats either. I think that she could never get out of the Republican primary. Joe, you may disagree with me, brother, but I think the biggest fear the Democrats have to worry about is a ticket that is topped by Liz Cheney and the VP candidate is Adam Kinzinger. And if that were to occur, the Democrats would eat their own lunch because they have a lot of crossover appeal. But that's just me. <laughs> What do you think, Joe? And, and and that is just my good friend, Brian, who I love and adore. Um, but but he That's ain't serious. where. But because you said you sent a note to me earlier. I'm not going on at Brian's on. A chip for the record. I'm doing this appearance under protest. OK, <laughs> let the record stand here. Uh, I am with Brian Karen, but we'll get into that later. Um <laughs> Unlike my good friend, Brian, and unlike you, Chip, um, look, I, I still hear from Republican-based voters every day. There is no way on God's green earth Liz Cheney or Adam Kinzinger right. or Joe Walsh could ever, ever, ever get nominated right. to anything in this Republican Party. I think Trump's the favorite. I don't know if he'll stay in. Uh, nobody knows what's going to happen, but he still has a hold over a chunk of that party. Well, he set you know, he set that press conference up before the 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 um, November the eighth, not having any idea how bad obviously they would perform across the country. Um, although they they got the house, but it's it's I don't think they have the house in numbers that are enough to even to impeach Biden or to. Um, so I mean, it, it seems to me that uh, we're in a, in a, a situation where. You know, Trump doesn't I mean, he may have the, the base, those voters in red states that only watch Fox News or OAN. But um, what about the money? You heard Murdoch and others that are saying no. I mean, so how does he move forward here? Is it all on grassroots money from these people? Is that it? Well, he did, I'll, I'll say this and then Brian can chime in. Uh, he, he doesn't need money. He doesn't need Republican donors. He doesn't need the establishment. He doesn't need McConnell and McCarthy. All he needs is the voters. And if Republican base voters stick with him, all of these other cowards, I, and I mean cowards, the donors, the elected officials, uh, even some in the right wing media who are voicing hesitation, they're all going to follow. I don't know if that will happen, if the voters will stay with him. But if the voters stay with him, all these other people will follow. Well, I, and I will uh, echo my, my good friend, Joe Walsh, and I'm here under protest because I'm agreeing with him too much. <laughs> <laughs> but I will, I will say this. I, it's, if, as long as Donald Trump wants to be there, Donald Trump will be there. And that's Donald Trump. I, he hasn't changed any. And he's maybe lost some evangelicals. He's maybe lost some of the base. But he still has a hardcore number. And remember, he ran as an outsider uh, the first time, and he's trying to recreate those very conditions again to make himself, you know, the underdog as he pulls, you know, as he rolls into the uh, election season. But I also think he's at a, a position not from strength. He's declared earlier than anyone else in history that I can remember. And he's so he's trying to clear the path now. And you're right, Joe, they, they will follow him into the depths of hell and back. And there's nothing that, and I've talked to, the best I think you can hope for is, like I have a brother-in-law who's a, a, a Trumper. He's from mid-Missouri. He's a farmer. And he saw Josh Hawley's uh, Cherry to Fire Act in the Capitol. And he, he and he called him a, you know, the P word. He's a big, and he's, so he's, he, the best you can hope for in that regard is what he did. He didn't vote. He doesn't like the Democrats. He doesn't like the Republicans now. He's wary of Trump because of what's happened. So he just didn't vote in the midterms. 
that's the best I think the Democrats can hope for. You're absolutely right about Liz and and Adam. They could never, you, you couldn't either. You couldn't get out of of, of any of the uh, yeah. primaries in this Republican Party. However, if the Republicans woke up, it would be ironic. They're not, but you're yeah. right, they're not. But if they did, it would be ironic because then they would own, they could own it. But hey, Chip, Chip, here's the other X factor, and and uh, Brian knows this well. I think Trump's going to be indicted once or twice. I think Trump's going to be in a lot of legal hell this next year. What does the base do with that? Do the does the Republican base even rally around him stronger? We saw when the with the whole Mar-a-Lago thing when that broke, even regular Republicans said, "Well, that's that's BS. I, I'm with Trump on this one." I don't know if all the chaos of indictments will strengthen his support among the base or his base will say that's too much. Now here's well, his impeachment hoax on January 6th. And they tried it in the Senate. They went through the whole process and we won. We went through the whole process. So wouldn't this sort of be a, uh... and then you take a look at the other. We went through two of them. And isn't this sort of like double jeopardy? In the old days, they used to call it double jeopardy. God, he's such an idiot. Double jeopardy. Um, double jeopardy. Well, let me ask you this, though. So does an indictment um, strengthen him right now? I mean, I think, you know, radicalize his supporters. Look, everybody. Hold on. Hold on. Is this war. why Jack Smith was was uh, is this why special counsel? Because Garland wanted to separate himself because he it let this guy do the indictment. So it doesn't seem like it's coming from well, of the Biden administration. Is that it? It's the, well, the reason why, according to the DOJ, that they, they set this up is because, look, it boils down to this. Smith can donate all of his time to one job, overseeing the investigation of Donald Trump. Merrick Garland has a lot more on his plate than Donald Trump. I know Donald Trump would like to think he's the only thing that's of importance on the planet. But Merrick Garland actually has a job to do running the Department of Justice. And taking care of the Donald Trump investigation takes up a shitload of time. So what you have is now one guy who's in charge of that. It's not going to be a delay in the investigation because they, you already have the team in place, and this is two years down the road. It's not like the Mueller investigation. It's not like other special investigations where they had to ramp up and it took them three months to staff the office. This is already fully ongoing, and now you have one guy whose only job is to oversee it. So I would think that that would actually help fast-track the investigation. Yeah, I think I, there will be an indictment. I agree and, with you, Joe. And Chip, I'll just add this, though. Um, it doesn't to, to me, it was a mistake by Garland to appoint a special counsel. The average American does not distinguish between the Department of Justice, the attorney general and a special counsel. Right. If Trump is indicted, it will be the deep state, period. No oh, matter yeah. who it is. No matter well, who. You're right. But I'll push back a little bit. I think it, as far as procedurally and in the court of law is where it will make a difference in the court of public opinion. You're absolutely right. Nobody's going to give a shit. They're just going to go deep state. It's that damn Biden that did it. And yeah. but they're always going to say that the the real the real tale of the tape is in court and making the case. If you're going to, you know, as they say, if you're going to go after the king, you better not miss. So this is dotting the I's and crossing the T's. We've been going after the king now for uh, six years. Yeah, but it's a lot easier to commit a crime. I'll defend the Department of Justice in this regard. It's it's a lot easier to commit a crime than it is to prosecute a crime. And sure. it's really much more difficult when you're prosecuting Donald Trump because that slippery son of a bitch <laughs> will do anything right. he can to get out of it. Right, right. But Chip, Chip, to your point, we've been going after this criminal for six to seven years and among his supporters, it's a badge of honor. Uh, Trump, yep. either Trump is innocent or the deep state just won't stop. That's what they believe. I tend to think an indictment politically among Republicans will help Trump. Well, the secretaries of state in some of the battleground states uh, were voted were Democrats, which kind of hurts the idea that uh, if, if in fact he does run in 2024, we get some you know jury nullification, as it were. Um, and and I that worried me before. And it's got to um, obviously at this point, you know, he, I, I think that he announced it because I think he thought that he would get the, the, the overwhelming support. 
And when he didn't, now I think he's doing it to avoid indictment, thinking exactly what you guys said, that the, the, the people will say it's a deep state indictment and that they. But nonetheless, if he's still, you know, can you find 12 people to convict him? That's not going to happen until after 2024. Right. You guys. Well, look, but to that point, Chip, he knows that declaring he knows because as I know he knows because the people close to him have told me he knows that declaring doesn't keep him from being indicted. What what he's doing by declaring now is trying to clear out the, the path to, uh, you know, uh, to him being nominated. But more importantly, legally, it's it what it gives him is or I, I guess for his supporters, it gives him the ability to rally the most radical of them like he did on January 6th. And there are people who are afraid that there will be, you know, something that will happen to the United States, a civil war. Look, there might be more violence. That's that's but we have mass shootings in this country every day. I think you'll just see more mass shootings that have a political uh, uh, component to them. And, and, and Chip, Brian, Brian knows Trump better than you and I do. When, when Trump teased the announcement a week before the midterms, he, like everybody, expected a big Republican night. Yeah, period. And most right. everybody did. Trump hates to look weak. So he couldn't pull that right, announcement. Right, There's right, no right. way. Absolutely right. You're absolutely right. And so does that mean that that this was never really? Uh, I mean, well, that now he he did it because he feels. Does he? Do you think he feels he can win? I mean, yeah. who would run with him? Would it would it be this person? We drove a stake through the heart of the McCain machine. Apparently, she should have thought that through. Because hey, Chip, you. Chip and Brian, I'm on the record. I said a month before the election that win or lose, Kerry Lake will be his VP. And I think, again, if and, and Brian may be right, but if, if Trump stays in this thing, I think he'll pick her next spring, real early. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Joe. But I think that Donald Trump is running the long con. I really don't think... I. Michael Cohen, his former attorney, didn't think he'd ever he, he would even, you know, uh, actually sign up to run. But he does think that he won't be on uh, the ticket in 2024. I think Donald Trump has already given us the reason why he'll retreat from the ticket uh, when he does. And I think that it will he'll he has said before that I'd love to run. I could run. But then, you know, the doctors could say something's wrong and I'll have to drop out. I mean, he's already gone on record saying that. So, so that'll I, be his version of I want to be more time with my family. Yeah, no, one, say, Look, no one would believe that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, no. I. Uh, but nobody will again, believe Joe's that. got a point too. This this sob is not. He hates to show any weakness. He could take this to the bitter end, and I wouldn't be surprised if he did. So and and, now, and 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 Chip and Brian, even if Brian's right and he gets out. He'll do whatever he can do to to fuck up the Republican ticket, okay. whatever it is. You're right there. Well, would he run as a third party? <laughs> I, I doubt it. He doesn't have the energy or the drive, I think, by then. But he'll 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 start a movement and he won't let his movement support the Republican. Well, ticket. So explain to me these early poll numbers out of New Hampshire and Iowa that shows DeSantis with a double digit lead. Is it just a fluke? Is it an outlier? What? I, I, Go ahead, Brian. Yeah, yeah, I don't. I, Chip, I put absolutely no no bearing on any of these polls right now. Look, the only reason Republicans- well, Hold on, Mike, but Joe, what if Cruz, uh, DeSantis, um, who else has been Pence? What if these guys get all out and they start, you know, talking about the last four years? Will they, again, is his base really that dedicated that they yes! won't to anyone else? <laughs> yes, yes. The percentage Look, of the base, yeah. Yeah, wow. yeah, the, the most radical. And look, I put uh, Joe. I agree with you, Chip. There's no point in putting any stock in the polls. They <laughs> when have they been right? Where what happened to the crimson red wave that we were supposed to get? The polls are useless at this point. They could show Trump or DeSantis are 80 points out, and it would mean absolutely, absolutely bupkis. What matters is who's going to go. Who's going to show up to vote? Who's going to be more energized to vote? People mostly have made up their mind already. So that's where we are in this. I mean, if you love Trump, you're, you love him to the better, bitter end. And the only reason, Chip, the only reason DeSantis is measuring in the polls right now is because 
DeSantis's support is coming from Trump supporters, people who still love Trump, but they feel like DeSantis can win. That's what yep. they tell me all the time. Yes. No, but a lot of these people don't even know DeSantis. Wait till he gets on the national stage. Right. He yeah. ain't what these people think he is. Well, I mean, you know, in the past 32 years, I think it are 34 years, the Republicans have won the popular vote in a, in a presidential election once in 2004. Um, and I wonder if that portends uh, anything other than, well, it's, you know, to me, it seems like those numbers indicate to me that, um, of, you know, governors will be more Democratic. Legislatures can still gerrymander. They can do what they want and keep Republicans in there. But to me, it, it all seems to me that we're all on the verge of repeating 2020 again. And it feels like that in my bones. I know, Brian, you will disagree. And, and, and we'll just have to wait and see if we get a little bit closer to this. You guys have a great Thanksgiving. Thank Joe you so Walsh much for being president. here. Joe Walsh for president. Hey, Brian real quick. For pre Biden Biden for, for vice president. How about that ticket? Yeah. <laughs> real quick. So um, here's mine. The Democratic nominee for 2024, Gretchen Whitmer. Wow. Not bad. Yeah, Not we'll bad. see. All right. Thank you, guys. Be well. Happy Thanksgiving, you too. Happy Thanksgiving, Happy Thanksgiving you guys, guys. Thanks so much. See us Again, that is uh, Joe Walsh, a former uh, presidential candidate and uh, a congressman uh, for the Republican Party. And also Brian Karam, White House correspondent. His new book is called Free the Press. Reminding you, this is brought to you by Moskowitz, LLP.com. Steve Moskowitz and his incredible staff of tax attorneys. Well, look, if you have a problem, this is the guy you want to have on your back. Uh, he will help you tremendously. He's been a great help to me. I've sent friends to him many times, people that hadn't filed taxes in years, responsible people or musicians and, and comedians like me. But he's, so they're good people. And if you have any kind of tax issues, triple eight tax deal, call them. It's a real low key environment. They'll help you through it. Um, again, I've run into people all the time that have used, uh, again, Moskowitz, LLP.com. All right. Um, so this was uh, a, an interesting uh, look forward. And speaking of looking forward, we're going to talk to right now to the incredible talent of Mark Thompson wow. and Nikki Maduro, both who I have know, show right? Mark's yeah. show kicks off in about eight minutes mm -hmm. and Nikki's kicks off at noon today. Yep. Um, Mr. Thompson, tell us a little bit about what you have going on here. We have, uh, first of all, great congratulations and shout out to you, Mr. Franklin. As usual, your Rolodex. I was telling my uh, my lovely other half, uh, you know, Chip has several superpowers. Uh, he's got a he's like a video <laughs> ninja. He puts all this video stuff together and he's a great talk show host, of course. But. He also has an additional superpower, and that's the Rolodex. Just the guests are insane. So congratulations. And, you know, it's always like a, it's like a political and co a comedic version of Hollywood Squares when I watch your show. I mean, it's just really is great, pal. So congratulations and on I all that. And I would like to say. <laughs> uh, let me just say uh, torture free uh, Thanksgiving in my house. Okay. No, uh, no dead birds on my table. Okay, here, buddy? Man. I, so, I'm, a, I'm a veggie. I'm a, I love that. although yeah, I, I used love, to say on. that, you know, how about that? Yeah. <laughs> animals can always run away, but plants are stuck there. Like, ah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, well, it's so much easier. I mean, you can, you know, they built these analogs to, uh, uh, to animals, you know, in other words, you can have a, a turkey loaf thing. I get it. It's not exactly like a turkey, but uh, it's, you know, there's no cruelty. So uh, anyway, uh, I see the, we call it turkey day. I get it. And I don't fault anybody because I know it's a tough turn to make maybe, but uh, it's cool, uh, Chip, that you're, uh, you're already on board. Um, vaccine breakthrough. We're going to talk about that today. I've got audio from uh, uh, over the weekend from Face the Nation, uh, Pence and Barr and Rosenstein. They're all um, they're all doing the, you know, showing up to a camera and making uh, the comments and we'll break them down. Pence, of course, is pitching a book, but the others are weighing in on on the existing growing legal travails of the former president. So we'll talk a little bit about that. It's Mark's Murder Monday, Chip, and I don't need to tell you, of all people, a uh, longtime fan of the show, what that means. Uh, it's actually only our second week of uh, Mark's Murder Monday, Chip. Uh, my uh, lovely Courtney is a huge uh, true crime and murder buff. It, it is messed up. I have no interest oh, in that stuff. At I love that stuff. That's okay. awesome. Yeah, yeah. So hey, she, she comes in and she features a different story like this every Monday. So we'll have that. Oh, well, that's great. Uh, I love that. Yeah. And uh, Gary Dietrich will be here. We'll break down politics more. As I say, I've got all that audio coming up. It's uh, 
Uh, I'm just looking. Thank you for uh, Law and Disorder, which is a regular segment I do. We've got uh, a huge cocaine bust, an LAPD uh, detective uh, accused of buying a silencer online, as you know. There's all kinds of weird stuff going on. I'm looking. It is truly a big show, if I can say it, Chip. It's big. Oh, that's awesome. It really is. Yeah. We're going to yeah. start a feature tomorrow. Guess the day of this week, Chip's not wearing any pants. <laughs> Every <laughs> day. Yeah. Let me guess. Every day. You, you look so good, Chip. You look like you're on your way to a job interview or something. What is that about? Well, in a way, it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, Mr. Thompson, I know you got to get ready and prepping for your show. I'm going to let Thanks, you hop pal. out of here. We'll yeah. see you. Go on YouTube.com slash Mark Thompson. And uh, you see the yeah, whole show. If you just, put, if you just look for the Mark Thompson show, just to, in the, in the uh, you'll see it. The Mark Thompson show. You got it, show. buddy. We'll see you Love in a while. Everybody. See you. Thanks, so pal. Long. All right. Uh, this is, of course, is all, my former co host for two years on KGO Radio. Before they went in the dumper. Um, and uh, you have your own show, which is just kicking ass. It's yeah. so cool to see you. And, and although I, I will say that that painting to your right over of your left shoulder, right, your right shoulder, it's right crooked. Here. See it? It's right? not crooked. Everyone says that. I have measured it. It's not. It's just that the wall goes this way. I understand. Well, you know, just. Do you want saying. me to make it crooked so it looks straight? Uh, you know what I'm just going to say? You're going to win. Anyway, so. <laughs> Whatever, I'll take the damn picture off. I'll put a picture of you right there. Okay, no, there you Matthew go. Matthew McConaughey. Right, that'll scare him away. There you go. All right, so what Twitter. do you got going on? Well, we're gonna get into the Twitter thing. Trump being back on Twitter, and I have a ton of sound as well. You know, Hakeem Jeffries, who looks to be the next speaker, weighing in. Adam Schiff weighing in, and just do you think if Trump actually is as as engaged on Twitter, if people are going to pay attention to him, because I think that ship has sailed for him. I honestly think there has been a turning of the tide when it has comes to his popularity. I don't think he's put a tweet No, 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 no. He, his social, his right? platform's o open, but yeah. I don't think he's tweeted yet, which is good. But at the same time, I don't follow him. I unfollowed him, you know, bef uh, before, actually right after January 6th. So we'll get into that. We're going to get into... You know, the fact that President Biden, you know, became the oldest president we've ever had. And who's next with Nancy Pelosi leaving? Hakeem Jeffries, I think, is 30 years younger than her. Just are these people that are coming up behind them going to do things the same way? And what's Congress really going to look like? Uh, a little closer to home, it was, uh, you know, Transgender Remembrance Day yesterday. And then what happened at that nightclub in Colorado, just absolutely horrific. And did you see are that, there politics have, underneath all of this? Were you watching the interview I did with that one of those survivors in there? I'm sorry, I wasn't oh, able to. But real quick, I know we got, but this is, I just yeah. want to look at this real quick. This is heartbreaking. I turned to my left and I saw the flash from the muzzle. And when I saw that, I ran, and I ran to the dressing room uh, where the drag queens change and get ready for their performances. And there was, including me, there were two other people in there. Um, shaking, crying, fearing for our lives. I'm thinking, like, at any second, this man could just bust through the door and kill us if he really wanted to. Bodies on the ground, blood, shattered glass people dead it was sad yeah i, I just when oh, i think of that so awful yeah i've seen i've seen him and then he like i think at some point in the interview and i don't know if it was that one he's like i'm not okay my friends are dead and i'm not okay and it's like somebody needs to watch out for this guy you know i can't imagine the horror of of witnessing that Losing people and so senselessly, and then and did, of course did you, did you the tie to the, to the guy. Oprah tweeted, she tweeted, maybe you should go to church instead instead of being go to drag queen events. So this but that is, wasn't after that wasn't right after this. This that yeah, was a while ago, right? No. no. Go check it out. Yep, she's commented on this and said something right to this. Oh, I thought she had. I thought she was getting uh, nah, criticized for people. trying to do the thoughts and prayers thing, even though she's been, you know, anti LGBTQ. So yeah, bad people. Oh, it's awful. But yeah, so we'll be doing that. It won't be all heavy. Uh, you know, the uh, the Macy's holiday window display is up and running. So we'll we'll check in on the little puppies and kittens that are up. We have to talk a little bit about the World Cup too. Uh, did you see the Morgan Freeman? Thing. No, no, oh, no. that's crazy. I can't play all of it, I but I can play it out. Drink there. No booze. 
Well, where is it? Of course. Why? Yeah, know. You, well, the, yeah they'll put a have bag over a woman's head, but you can't have a Budweiser. Nope, you break. cannot. But yeah, so we're going to dip into that. A bunch of stuff we have coming up. I'll have tons of sound. All right. Well, we're going to look forward to it. It starts at 12 o'clock. Yep. Nikki Maduro show. That's yep. K-K-I-M-E-D-O-R-O. Thank you. Thank you. And we will look forward to it. You be good. All right. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Right. Bye. See you, next, see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. Well, uh, that's about it for this show. Uh, I want to remind you on tomorrow's show, um, I, this is an old friend of mine who used to work at Snopes, and now she works at Truth or Fiction. Her name is Brooke Binkowski, and we're going to talk about how hard it is to to traverse the uh, the web and 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 discern the truth from all the BS and lies. And Chip Chinnery, who is an old comedian friend of mine who has uh, written a book, you've seen he has been in over, I think. I want to say 300 sitcoms as a character actor and about that many commercials. When you see the guy, you go, I know that guy because he's been in everything and we go way back. So we're going to talk a little bit about what it's like out there now. And uh, of course, he's been on TV forever and it'll be fun. Anyway, um, by the way, so you can uh, follow me on Twitter at Chip Franklin and uh, join us again tomorrow at 9 a.m. right here. I want to again, thanks to Moskowitz, LLP.com. If you ever have any tax issues, triple eight tax deal, they are the best. You guys be well, and uh, we'll do it again again tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Till then. We told the people that we shall overcome. Yes, we can. Person, woman, man, camera, TV. What the f*** is wrong with you?